Today's lecture is on matter and atoms. What makes up matter? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Air, water, and people are made of matter. The term matter describes all the physical substances around us. The universe is made up of matter and energy, and energy we will discuss further in our physics unit of physical science. Matter is made up of atoms. An atom is the smallest whole particle of matter. Yes, you can break up atoms into even smaller pieces, which we'll get into, but we consider the smallest whole particle of matter is an atom. The word atom was coined around 450 BC by a Greek philosopher named Democritus. The word atom means uncuttable. Democritus used the sands on a beach analogy. You can combine the particles together, the sand, to build a sand castle, but you cannot break up the grains of sand any further. Of course, with modern technology we have been able to do just that, but this equipment was not available until much, much later than Democritus' day. He is quoted as saying, Nothing exists except atoms and empty space. Everything else is opinion. Sounds like he knew our politicians well. This is his grain of sand, his atom, the model of the atom. Aristotle, who lived at the same time, had a different view. Ancient rivalries going on here. He said that the universe is made up of air, excuse me, earth, fire, water, air, and ether, which we could think of as a mist or a gas. Here's a picture. Oh, wrong, earth, wind, and fire. Let's try that one again. Better. looks a bit like Democritus anyway. Uh, Aristotle, who didn't believe in experimentation, said that Democritus had no evidence, which he didn't. Particle accelerators weren't invented until just recently. Aristotle ignored Democritus. Therefore, the scientific community, if you can call a community that didn't believe in experimentation scientific, ignored Democritus. And Democritus theory faded away. John Dalton reinvigorated the use of the word atom by forming his atomic theory in 1802. He lived in England from the mid-1700s to the mid-1800s, which is, in case you were wondering, 200 years after Isaac Newton, another famous Englishman. Dalton experimented with pressures and weights of different gases. He found references to Democritus' work and used the word atom to explain his experimental results. He showed how matter is made of elemental atoms and that atoms of each material have a distinct weight. Elemental meaning the element oxygen and the element hydrogen. Here's the model he presented for the atom. Look familiar? This is a picture of the elemental symbols that John Dalton proposed. The numbers are the weights that he found these to be. Uh, just as weights are based today upon the hydrogen atom, these are based upon the hydrogen, hydrogen atom. Notice how the hydrogen atom has one, and then uh, carbon has five. That means carbon is five times the weight of hydrogen. Elemental means primary or basic. That's what the word means. Do you recognize any of these basic elements? Pause this recording and take a minute to view them. Next up, J.J. So, J.J. Thompson discovered the first subatomic particle, the electron, in 1897. Thompson's model looked rather like a chocolate chip cookie, with the chips being the electrons. He felt the electrons were evenly distributed throughout. Mrs. Fields would be proud. There's Mrs. Fields. Though, note that JJ's model had the chocolate chip cookie and cooked. It was a ball. It wasn't flattened like I'm showing here, but this picture looks good. Rutherford did some experiments, and he separated out Thompson's electrons, those are the chocolate chips, from the nucleus, the dough, 
Rutherford discovered that the two were not evenly mixed through experiments he performed in 1911. He wasn't sure how related they were, in other words, how they were close they were to each other. Did one form a shell around the other? Did it stay in an orbit? But he knew that they did not form a solid. Further experiments caused further details to emerge. By 1919, he found protons when he was able to create hydrogen from nitrogen. Hydrogen is the simplest atom, and nitrogen is a more complex atom. By removing subatomic particles, he was able to create hydrogen. It still doesn't give us our modern model, but the discovery of protons helps further details. By 1932, James Chadwick proves that the nucleus containing, contains a neutral particle, which he called the neutron. With this discovery of the neutron, Chadwick was able to solve the perplex, perplexing problem of why the atomic weight of an element was not matching its number of protons. Another early model, and one that is often used to this day, though it's not entirely accurate, is the Bohr model. Niels Bohr proposed this model to explain how energy is absorbed by atoms and light is emitted from electrons. The light, the energy in a atom, causes the electron to change what they call orbitals. In this model, electrons move in definite orbits around the nucleus. Bohr discussed how electrons move in definite paths. We incorrectly call them orbits around the nucleus. We do use this model to this day. It's very useful, but do realize it's just a model. It's not how it really looks in real life. One thing that we still didn't know is why don't protons split? Scientists know that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. So you have protons, they have the same charge, they should be repelling. So they wondered why the protons don't fly apart. They found their answer in 1947 when they discovered other particles that they named mesons. By the way, when I say the word they, lots and lots of people were part of the discovery of mesons. Mesons hold the protons and neutrons together to form the nucleus. We are getting closer to the modern standard model of particle physics that is agreed upon as the current best description of our universe. We're not there yet, but we're almost there. As scientists did more and more experiments, more and more collaboration, working closely together, they began to realize that there was something funny about protons and neutrons. In 1968, that was after I was born, they discovered that protons and neutrons are made up of smaller particles they called quarks. Scientists discovered many, many, many different flavors of quarks. Finally, they were able to categorize them into six different types of quarks, up, down, strange, charm, and top and bottom. All these have anti-up, anti-down, anti-strange. Protons have two quarks, two up quarks, and one down quark, while neutrons were found to have two down quarks and one up quarks. In addition to quarks, there are anti-quarks, leptons, and bosons. So I'm not showing the whole picture here. These are all called elementary particles because they can't be broken down any further, or at least we think. We are not going to go into this much detail. We are just going to look at the atoms, the building blocks of matters, the nucleus, which is composed of the protons and neutrons, and the electrons. So there you have it, the basic building blocks of matter. The basic structure we will examine in greater detail is only to the subatomic level, as I said before. We're not going into the elementary particle level. Our next unit will include the properties and characteristics of the subatomic particles listed here. Enjoy!